Today is Monday, March 27th, and I think I'm randomly starting a project right now. So this plant right here is my Alocasia Michaeliziana, and it's not looking its best. As you can see, it has a lot of really droopy leaves. It didn't grow for me for a very long time, um, and I attributed that to a repot that I did. I upsized the pot probably too much and it just took a really long time to bounce back. So that happened and it didn't grow for months and months and then recently it's given me this new leaf which looks amazing and I was so happy to see that and then also this one is new I believe. So it's given me a couple new leaves and those ones are looking pretty good like they're nice and perky but the rest are just drooping down. I've tried to move this around to different light sources to get the leaves to kind of perk up, but I think that they might just be stuck like that. Sometimes plants don't bounce back once the leaves start drooping. I don't know, I'm gonna try and see if I can get them to face up again, but I don't know if they will. Anyways, long story short, this plant needs a makeover and the thing that I'm gonna be addressing today is these long stems. As you can see, it's starting to get really thick, woody stems. I've had this plant for a few years now and I've never propagated it or anything besides putting just uh, the odd corm in here every now and then. Like this is a corm I sprouted and potted back in to fill the plant up. But I don't like the look of like, this is almost looking like a dracaena or something. Like it's got like a trunk and then it branches out. And I want this to be like under the soil, you know what I mean? But there's not really enough space to keep potting it lower and lower. So I just Googled if it's possible to propagate alocasia by stem because I've never really seen it done before. I've definitely never done it myself. So I didn't even know if it was possible, but I was thinking it would be because I know that they can grow roots from this section. So anyways, I Googled it and what popped up was a video by Rose, Plant with Rose. I'll link that video down below because that's the video that has inspired me to try this out for myself but I'm basically gonna be air layering around these stems and then once roots grow from here, I'm gonna be chopping and then repotting the plant back into pots so that this is like covered. And I think that that might help with the leaves not coming in droopy as well. I don't know, I just don't like this like really long stem look. So right now I'm just gonna put some sphagnum moss around the base and we'll kind of see what happens, but hopefully by the end of this video we have an alocasia that I'm a lot happier with that just looks better. So yeah. Okay, so I've got my bin of sphagnum moss here and I also have some plastic wrap and I'm just going to place the sphagnum moss around the base, like I said. It's just gonna create more humidity to encourage roots to form. Okay, I feel like it's gonna be kind of hard to secure the plastic wrap because there's so many of them, but I'm gonna see what I can do here. Let's maybe start with the big one first. I'm just gonna, as long as it's like mostly covered, it will contain a lot of the humidity. Let's tuck it in around here. Okay, so not perfect, but I think that it's gonna do the trick, hopefully. One thing that I would have done if I had some on hand was add Super Thrive to the moss, like soak the moss in Super Thrive water. I'm just out of Super Thrive right now. It's um, like a plant supplement or vitamin solution that encourages rooting. 
So that's something I would have used, but I think that this is going to be just fine. I will update you guys once we have some root action. Okay, hello. It is 9.15 p.m. on, what day are we in? April 12th. And I just went to water my Alocasia Michalisiana and I have an update on our air layering experiment. I was just looking at it earlier today from the front here on the shelf and I was like, oh, like I don't see anything going on. Um, maybe it'll take a really long time, whatever, whatever. And then I just brought it out here to water it and look at the back. Oh my gosh, bam, look at those. What? There's huge roots coming out. They're huge! What the heck? I'm so shocked. <gasps> Are you kidding me? I'm just- oh my gosh, there's more down here. <gasps> I'm so shocked that this is rooted up- oh my gosh, even more- that this is rooted up so quickly. Oh my goodness. These are like nice juicy roots. I literally feel like I'm gonna be able to snip this and just repot the upper part of the plant, which is what I want because that's where the nice leaves are. Oh my goodness, I'm so impressed, like, wow. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna finish my watering um, so that I can go to bed, but I just had to, I just had to do this check-in quickly. Okay, I cannot believe how fast everything has been happening with this plant. I didn't think today was gonna be the day that we were topping it, but I think it might be. Today is April 23rd, and I just went and checked on our Alocasia Michalitziana, and the roots are wild. So, immediately I could see this one trying to bust out of here, and then I looked around and there's roots coming from all of them now. Huge, healthy, robust roots, and oh my goodness, okay, we have to take the plastic wrap off so we can get a better look here. I did not expect this to root so quickly. I don't even know how long it's been, but I'm pretty sure it's been less than a month. And this has just, it's just gone so much faster than I thought it was going to. Um, okay, you can even see, oh my goodness. Okay, so some of these roots are coming down and then growing right into the pot already. Like, oh my goodness. I'm so impressed. I didn't even know that Alocasia would even do this. So my mind is blown right now. Um, somebody commented on one of my recent houseplant updates video where I kind of just briefly mentioned that I was doing this experiment and they said that they've done it with theirs before and it worked really well and then the base like grew out a new plant also which I didn't even really think about that I'm gonna get a new plant from the base too so that's just so cool. I'm so excited I definitely think we have enough roots for me to chop it today let me get the rest of the plastic off here. Okay I'm just gonna remove the moss around here now so that we can actually see where we're cutting just gonna put it in a bowl beside me here. Oh my goodness. I I just like can't believe this. Wow. Take a train ride just to see you. Ride for hours just to please you. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go in and cut, I don't know, I guess just take my cuttings, try to cut below as many of the roots as possible so that I can include um, a bunch of them. I'm just gonna start with this kind of smaller one near the edge here. Maybe I'll like loosen some of the roots that are rooted into the soil. Oh, this one's really, I'll pull it out. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna try to be careful, <laughs> and, okay, ready? Oh my gosh, there we go. Okay, I think I cut it. I'm just gonna try to loosely, again, some of the roots are, no, I don't think that's from this one, but, oh, there we go. Gently pull it up, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was just not expecting like such 
full root systems to develop on all of these pieces in such a short amount of time. This is literally exactly what I was hoping for. Like, exactly. Because now I can just repot these and they're not going to have a big giant stem. I can actually like put that under the potting mix a little bit. This yellow leaf is going to go as well. This is just going to be... I think I'll just leave it on for now because I don't want to like stress this too much, but yeah, this is, oh my goodness, I'm just, I'm so thrilled that this has worked so well and honestly a little surprised. Like I was just not expecting there to be this many healthy roots on here. Okay, so next one, this is a big one, so I'm going to have to really cut, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> Again, I'm just going to gently pull up. Oops, one of the leaves is under the pot. Oh, I think it's getting damaged. Shoot. It's okay. That leaf is going to go eventually anyways. Okay. Look at those roots. Like, they are huge. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you can see these ones were right in... The potting mix, that is so crazy. And then these lower droopy leaves, they're gonna go. I feel like this is so close, sorry. <laughs> these lower droopy leaves are gonna go eventually and then I'm just gonna be left with this nice like perky one, you see? Um, yeah, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, two done. So there's one. That one doesn't have to be cut, that's just a small one. One, two left. Okay. Oh, this is probably the thickest one. Oh my goodness. It's hard to get through. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Got it. Okay. This one actually has... Actually, all the leaves on this are pretty nice, but the two, like, perkiest ones, because I'm just trying to get rid of the droopy ones, the two perkiest ones are the smaller ones at the top, and then there's these droopier ones, but they're not really yellow or anything. Anyways, we'll move on to the last cut, and then we'll pot these ones up. Okay, last one. kind of looking around to kind of visualize where all the roots are before I cut these. That looks pretty good though. Let's go here. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, this one only has two roots and a third on the way. That's not bad. Whoop. Little cutie. That's the newest leaf on this one. There's three leaves on it, but these two will go. I'll probably remove one of them right now just because this has like a pretty small root system to start out with and I don't want it to be overwhelmed with too many leaves to keep alive. Okay. There's some roots, like extra roots that grew that didn't come with the cuttings, just like a couple, but I'm just gonna kind of bury them back in here. And then this one is just a little, like, corm that I potted in. It doesn't look amazing, honestly. I don't know if I want to leave it in here or if I want to take it out. I'll just leave it for now, I guess. I'll probably wait and see if this grows back and then maybe just, like, sell the mother pot or something. Or give it away. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how nice it ends up looking. Okay, I'm gonna grab my potting mix supplies so that we can get all of these cuttings potted up. Okay, this was so just like impromptu. I was not expecting to do this today or so soon. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and pot it up. I'm gonna be throwing it into this pot. I'm thinking that this is like, I don't know, a six or seven inch and it's not super deep. I think it'll be good for now. I don't wanna put it into something too big because I find that alocasia really hate that. So I'd rather just put it into a smaller one and repot it once it gets root bound. But yeah, I think that this will be good for all of these cuttings. So I'm just gonna start by putting some potting mix in. 
I don't even have a potting mat. Like, I am unprepared, <laughs> but that's fine. Just gonna put some potting mix in. And then we're just gonna put the cuttings in. Oh, it's gonna look so much nicer with them buried in deeper like this now. This big one. Let's make sure that one gets in. Is there three? Oh, there's four. Oh my goodness, this one has such a massive root system. Okay, I'm just gonna fill it while I'm kind of holding them all in place. Okay, so this is what I'm look it's looking like and at first I didn't want to have to chop the drooping leaves off yet because I don't want to shock the plant, but I think I'm going to have to do it because it's just pulling the cuttings forward so much because they're drooping, like there's so much weight pulling them down, so it's kind of hard to like stabilize them and get them like potted up in the correct position. So I think I'm just going to go in and snip those drooping leaves off and just hope for the best. Just trying to stabilize the plant so that I'm not going to damage it. Uh oh. I literally think I just broke the leaf. Did I really just do that? Or was it just this one? Yeah, I snapped the leaf. Oh my gosh, that's annoying. That's so annoying. Ah, uh, okay. Don't do what I did. Use scissors. Okay, well, I'm still gonna leave the corm in here because it'll probably still grow, you know? I'll snip off this yellow leaf. I try to not cut when I can just pull them off because then you're not introducing like any more opportunity for like bacteria or um, like rot and things to get into the wound. So that's why I didn't want to cut, but I'm obviously just gonna have to. On a normal like established plant, I have no problem just chopping the yellow leaves off, but obviously it wasn't a good idea to do it to this one. <laughs> That's okay. I have lots. I even have, I think, a baby corm of this plant that actually I could even put in here right now, but I'll probably just see how this does and then add more corms later. I want this to be really full alocasia, which is why I want like so many different plants to be growing in this one pot. Okay, I can actually see, I think, the like little new growth point that was going to be the next leaf. So... I'm confident that this will grow. I'm just gonna leave it. That's kind of annoying though, but whatever. Stuff like that just happens to plants. You damage leaves, you break leaves off. It's just part of, part of the life. Okay, now for all these droopy ones, I'm literally just gonna snip. 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 Okay, oh, one more. Oh my gosh, what is that? All right, so we are down to a four leaf plant now. I'll show it to you. Okay, I just set it on my table here so that we're not distracted by the mess that's happening on my desk and all the leaves that I just removed. But I'm super happy with this. All the leaves look really healthy. This is exactly what I wanted. Um, I know it's like so much more sparse than what we started with, but I just wanted all the leaves to be pointing up and healthy because the other ones were just permanently drooped. And I mean, yeah, that just it just sucks that it ended up getting like that. And I don't know whether that was just from the shock of the repot I was talking about. Or I think I was talking about. I don't even remember what I've said in this video, but... Uh, I repotted that plant last summer and it just hasn't been happy since and it started drooping and then it just never, sometimes when plants droop, it's permanent, like they won't bounce back and that was what was going on with this plant. So 
I'm excited to just move onwards and upwards. All of the leaves will hopefully be healthy, grow well, uh, grow upward. And yeah, I'm pretty, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm pretty confident. I feel like we're starting with a really good root system. So yeah, I'm excited to um, give you updates in the future. I don't know if I want to end this video now or if I'll keep it going for a little bit longer just to see how it does and see if I get new growth and everything. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll check in within hopefully, you know, the next two or three weeks and see if we have any new growth. So far, I'm really happy with this experiment. And like I said, I just didn't really know that this was something that you could do with alocasia. I've always heard that you can only like propagate them by through corm or through division, but this air layering and cutting thing seems to have gone really well so far. So yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens with both of these plants, the base and these um, top cuttings. You might not think that this looks like it's gonna be a good update, but hear me out. So yes, as you can see, well, first of all, what day is it? May 18th is the date. So I'll put on the screen however long it's been since I did everything. But as you can see, the leaves are not very happy. They are, all three of them are on their way out. Um, but I do think that this plant is going to be okay. And the reason that I think that is because we have new growth. So I'm not too worried, honestly. I was worried until I saw that new growth, but now I'm not because even if I lose these three leaves, if we get fresh leaves, I would still consider this a success because I'm still not gonna have, like I still solved the problem of this being like completely grown up, like a big chunk. Um, and I've also got another pot, the base, which we're gonna check on in a minute as well. So. So far I'm considering this a success, you guys. We even have some new growth happening on, this one had zero leaves, and if you can see, there's a little speck of green. I don't know if you will be able to see, but there's a little speck of green. I can see fresh new growth coming up. So yeah, honestly, I feel like it's going well. Even though it looks suspicious, I have faith. Trust the process, right? So yeah, I just, you know, I could have ended the video before, but I really want to document the whole thing because maybe someone else would do this and have their plant start looking like this and freak out. So I just want to show you the whole thing through um, so that we can see what the plant ends up looking like at, you know, in, in the, over the long term. So yeah, this is what it's looking like today. I'm going to go grab the base of the plant so we can do a little update on that. Also, I should say that this has been growing under a Soltec Solutions light. Both of them have actually the base and this one because I just really want it to be getting bright light during this process for the roots to continue to grow in the pot and everything. So, oh, I can already, what? Oh no, that's bark. I thought there was a corm already. I was like, how in the world? Okay, so here's the base with its one sole little leaf hanging out there. There's another one that yellowed here. But I think that this one actually looks like it might be getting ready to put out new growth as well. So I'm keeping a close eye on that. Like it definitely feels pregnant. Oh my goodness, fungus gnat. But what else is happening here and what I'm expecting to happen is that the like stumps that we've left in here are actually starting to push out new growth. So it's not very, you know, far along yet, but you can see that there's new growth. I hope you're going to be able to see. There's new growth happening on this one, on that side there. And there's also new growth happening right here on this one. Like they just look like tiny little green nubs, but that's gonna turn into new growth points. And then this one, I haven't looked too closely. Oh yeah, I can see a growth point right there on that one. And then this one don't see anything on there yet, but I'm sure all of them are gonna put off new growth, honestly. Ooh, there's springtails in there. So yeah, just keeping these under adequate light, not letting them get like super bone dry, trying to keep my underwatering in check. But so far, I'm really happy with how this is going, even though it looks questionable at the minute. Hopefully the next time I check in with you, they're gonna look amazing. We are finally wrapping up this video. It is currently September 22nd. I think that it's been like six months since I chopped this plant. I'll put the how long it's been, the start date, the beginning date on the screen so that we can all see, but it's been a journey. 
And, you know, I would say I'm very happy with the results. We're obviously gonna talk about that, but I feel like it did take some good time. So I started this video very curious to find out if I was gonna be able to essentially air layer alocasia, have them root into some sphagnum moss and then chop that off and then repot the like rooted top cuttings. The conclusion that I came to from my limited, you know, research here, my limited experimentation is that yes, you can do it, but it was pretty hard on my plant and it did take it some serious time to bounce back, which I'm honestly not surprised when it comes to specifically the Alocasia Michaeliziana because I find that things like repotting really stress this plant. It can be a bit of a more finicky Alocasia in my experience as far as my Alocasia collection goes. I find that they're more prone to spider mites than the others and they also can shock after repotting. That's just been what I've found. But you know, if you're willing to put some patience in and you really want to restart your plant or you really want to multiply your plant, then I think that this way works to do that. So let's just take a look at the plants. Again, we have the top cutting, which were like the air layered cuttings. And then I also kept the base to see what would grow back from that. So I'll start off by showing you the top cuts. And oh my goodness, you guys, I am so, so happy with how this turned out. It's making me fall completely in love with this plant again. I've always said that, oh my gosh, I thought I saw something on it. I'm so, I've treated for bugs and we'll talk about that. I've treated for bugs already, but I thought I saw something. Um, anyways, I'm so happy with how this looks. This has always been one of my favorite alocasia. I think I called it my number one favorite alocasia at one point, which I think is tied with the dragon scale. But oh my goodness, like look at those dark velvety leaves. It is so pretty. So you can see that it ended up, even though it took its sweet time, it ended up growing back really, really well. The leaves are a pretty decent size. Um, all of the little plants are actively growing in here. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really happy with how this turned out. You can even see that there's a new leaf here coming out. Sorry, the sun is like... I actually had both of these living outside over the summer and they did pretty well out there despite struggling with spider mites. It's really strange because none of my other plants struggled with spider mites living outside, but these two were covered at one point. So I'm still treating them. They're living inside now. I brought them back in like a week ago and they are isolated in the bedroom with their own little grow light set up and everything. Um, I don't see any spider mites on them anymore, but you can see a lot of the spider mite damage. So if I would have been more on top of the spider mite situation, perhaps these would have grown even faster. But the whole point was just to find out if the air layering was even gonna work and how that was gonna go. And yeah, it obviously worked. So I'm really, really happy to have this as my new like main Alocasia Michaeliziana plant. It just looks so much better. Like I said at the beginning of the video, one of the reasons that I really wanted to chop is because my plant was getting these like long woody stems and it was just, it was becoming a little bit more unstable. It just didn't look that great, but this looks so good, so much better. There's no long woody stems. It looks a lot more compact. I'm just really, really happy with this. So yeah, top cut successful and yeah. And then we have our bottom cut here. So if you look in the pot, you can actually see it's like full of the little stumps from where I took the top cuttings from. And I decided to just keep this pot to see what would grow back. And as you can see, um, we have a lot of growth actually. It's not very big, like it's just small leaves. And this did take quite a while to get going, but eventually this is gonna size up and everything. So I'm just gonna keep it and watch it grow out. So definitely keep the base if you decide to chop your alocasia or air layer your alocasia. I'm really curious to try out different propagation methods for alocasia as well, like just taking cuttings and water propagating, stuff like that, that I've heard that you can do, but I've just never tried it out myself. Alocasia are so easy to propagate and that you can usually just find corms. So that's like the easiest way, but it is just fun to experiment sometimes. And especially in this case, because I really wasn't happy with how the main mother plant, well, I guess I only started with one. I wasn't happy with how my plant was looking. So I wanted to do something to kind of start it over and remedy that. And I'm really happy with the results. 
I would say that a lot of what growing plants comes down to is often just patience. And yes, there's certain things that you can do to speed things up or to resolve certain issues or make plants grow a little bit faster. But at the end of the day, they are plants and they're just gonna take time to grow. They're gonna take time to root. They're gonna take time to get established. So yeah, it really does just require a little bit of patience. Anyways, I'm so excited to wrap this up and I can't wait to see how this continues to grow because it's just really starting to pick up speed and really starting to size up, which is really exciting. And this new leaf is going to look great since I resolved the spider mites. So yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited to have this plant back inside my home and to just be focusing on it a little bit more because it was kind of just in, not in fend for yourself mode outside, but it's just different having the plants outside than having them inside. I'm really glad that this plant is back and you guys are gonna be seeing it a lot more again. All right, so I guess that's gonna be it for this one. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that y'all are having a lovely day. Leave me a comment down below, especially if you have any questions or anything, I'll do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Try